Hey everybody, um, today we're going to look at a very kind of simple cinemagraph that I worked on. Uh, last time we looked at a slightly more complex workflow um, where I did a lot more uh, in After Effects. Uh, this time I'm doing a lot more in Cinemagraph Pro by Flexel, uh, the software that I use for pretty much all my work. Uh, it's looking at how I do more of the masking in there, plus a bit of the image editing um, from Flexel as a still to Photoshop, then back into Cinemagraph Pro for the final look. Um, so let's just get into it. Um, so what you see here on screen is After Effects. I always bring my work first of all into After Effects where I do my color grading, my primary color grading. And uh, it's where I also lay up any additional elements. Um, sometimes I lay a still over the top of the video. Um, in this case, I'm just working with the video. I didn't take a second still, um, which you'll see why. So right here, um, the project I created, uh, all I've done is opened up the actual footage itself. I've chosen um, an in and out point and I've created a new composition um, from that video. That's then dropped the first video onto the timeline down here and what that I did with that first video I essentially just made it the background video here but then I've separately created a new um, layer of that same video with just the section of me skimming the stone. So that in Cinemagraph Pro, I can then choose exactly which still frame I want to use. So unlike another tutorial I did recently where that layer over the top was actually a still photo taken of the same scene, this is just the video split into two so that when I export this, I'm basically gonna have one video with uh, the section that I need for the still element. I know that somewhere in there is a frame that I'll grab as a still element, and then the background, which means it's gonna be much easier to mask that still element over the background because it's just the background. There's no other section of me to get in the way. So other than that, laying them on the timeline, cutting them to that piece, I've just done an adjustment layer at the top. Um, you can see a little bit of basic adjustment. It's just slightly kind of bringing in um, some color, some nice tones. So that's essentially it. From there, I'm just exporting that um, and creating uh, really a lossless file. So I choose Apple ProRes 422. I'm not gonna do it again. Um, I'd okay that. And then I just output it to where I want it to go. Okay, so that's really done in after Effects. So then we move into Cinemagraph Pro. That file um, that I've output as just a ProRes uh, movie file, I open as a project in Cinemagraph Pro. Um, when you first bring it in, you'll be able to select where you want the ideal loop to be. So you're in and your out point, um, just to create a nice loop on the wave. Um, and then you're choosing a crossfade to make those waves wash in on each other seamlessly. Uh, waves are a really nice way to get a nice loop. Once you've done that, you'll want to select your still frame. And of course, if you go over here, I'm not there because remember I've added that background loop but back here at the start was where I wanted to select my still. So I've selected, I think it was about this frame here, um, just about to skim the stone. It's a, an action which makes it clear that I'm in the middle of a motion and that works, works really well with the cinemagraph where it looks like you're in the middle of a motion, something that doesn't look natural just to be standing still. Um, that really highlights the, the sort of magical effect of a cinemagraph. Then you have to go into do your masking to say, okay, I want that to be still. I'll show you because I've already got the mask done, something I prepared earlier. Uh, so you'll see here where I've masked and where I haven't. So I've essentially gone around and I've gone in quite a lot of detail. And this is why I've done this in Cinemagraph Pro because it didn't have a lot of straight edges. It was mostly just edges where I could just paint my way around. Now you'll see something I really like in Cinemagraph Pro with this new MacBook Pro. Um, you've got the, the touch bar, which actually works really nicely, the controls. So if I select the brush size and if I want to go around and start painting, I can actually go and, and start adjusting this as I go. So as I'm painting around, if I could run into a corner there, but if I want to then just get bigger and bring it around, 
I can actually start adjusting as I go on the fly using my left hand um, and painting with my right hand on my touch bar or with a pen if you're on a tablet. So that is a really nice little feature, um, Cinegraph Pro. Even After Effects Photoshop doesn't work um, as live like that, doesn't work as seamlessly. Um, I find that you have to paint, then stop, then readjust the brush size, whereas this you can do it as you go, which is great. So you'll see just all the details. I've gone right into some of those edges, right into those corners, and I've done all this in Cinegraph Pro. Uh, up around here, I that bird, it was a tough one because it's actually quite hard to get that on a perfect loop at the same time as the waves, but it's worked out fairly clean, um, not perfect. And you'll see here on the water, I've actually done a graduated fade because I didn't want these moving in the original, they're waving back and forth. So what I've done, I've basically just created a big brush, I've lowered the opacity, and then you can just start painting back in at different opacities to create this graduated effect of it um, fading away so that where the water's moving there is quite subtle so that as you fade it into a still it's going to be slightly less obvious so even they're zoomed in you barely notice that graduation you could probably take it even a bit more gradual um, but once you come out like this you're hardly going to notice that uh, ideally you wouldn't have anything moving down around here um, but because those were, that was the only way to get around it. Um, because most of your attention is going to be focused down here, you're not as likely to notice that, except the fact that I just pointed it out. Okay, so that essentially, once you've done your masking on that, that could be your finished cinematograph. But I wanted to just do a little bit extra enhancement, as I often do. So what I did, I exported the still of that, saves it as a um, PNG. Open that PNG file in Photoshop, like that. And what I did was just some extra enhancements around the cloud areas, just to give it a bit of color. Um, I didn't do much down here around where the masking is. It was really just on the sky. So to show you what I did just quickly, here's the edited version over the top. Um, brought in, uh, I think using the um, raw filter, um, a graduate, graduated, almost like a graduated ND filter over the top and just a bit of extra blue in the background, a little bit extra color in those trees. Once I've done that, save it again as it is, as a PNG file. Back here in Cinemagraph Pro, um, I've gone to there and brought in the edited image, and that's it there. So you see, four and after. Okay, so that is my finished cinematograph. After that, as always, I upload to um, the cloud, Flixel Cloud, as part of my um, subscription plan, because uh, you're more likely to be featured by Flixel. Always recommend doing that. A lot of my work has been discovered for uh, commercial work because Flixel have featured me in their galleries. Um, really quite a good advantage there. And then, of course, I've exported it. Um, that's a 4K file. You see there, 3840 by 2160. Um, I will always export one 4K version, but mostly for um, social media, I'll just take it down to 1920 by 1080 HD and export it as an MP4. No longer needs to be ProRes for your final output for digital, for online. Um, and for, for Instagram, I'll mostly do it only around three to five seconds uh, because it'll just automatically loop and it's the smallest file possible and I export that. If I'm doing it for Facebook, I'll take it up as close as I can to 30 seconds. I often don't go to 28 because I do find sometimes if I go too close to 30, Facebook will recognize it as being over 30 seconds and it won't do the full three times loop up to 90 seconds. So I'll probably take that down to 26 seconds and I'll export that. I'll just show you actually, I'll do a quick export of that, just to show you how quickly Cinemagraph Pro actually exports these out. Um, just test. There you go, nice quick export. Uh, even when you're doing ProRes, longer files, super quick. Um, that's what I really like about it. So essentially that's my finished cinemagraph. Um, it's a really quick look at uh, a job I'd already done, 
not even a job, it's just my own personal cinemagraph. I did that in Holly down Queenstown, beautiful Queenstown, New Zealand. If you ever get a chance to travel there, I recommend it in the middle of winter. See all that snow on the mountains in the background. Beautiful place. So um, hope you enjoyed that. I hope that all made sense. Uh, my second tutorial video done. Um, let me know if you want me to do more um, or if you think it's damn awful and tell me to shut up. Either way, I'll take that. Um, see you next time.